Hello, students. Michael Sanchez, violin teacher here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, USA. Uh, we have a set of students with us today. Uh, last week we only had one. Um, Anna was the only student with us, but she got lots of great tips because, you know, it's like a private lesson. And uh, basically today we have three students, all from different parts of the United States, um, all violin players um, that actually play an orchestra at school and different things. So I'm going to kind of put them on real quick and introduce them. And then we're going to get to the actual class. Well, I'm going to give them some tips. All right, let's start with Maddie. How you doing, Maddie? Good. Good. How long have you been playing? Where are you from? I've been playing for two years, and I'm from Pennsylvania. Sweet. So what kind of stuff are you currently working on? Um, are you in a certain book or anything, or where are you at with violin playing? I'm using Essential Elements Book 3. I'm working on shifting. Sweet. Good book. Awesome. All right, well, I'll definitely have you play here in a little bit, and I'll give you some, uh, some good tips. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. Bradley, how you doing? Hi, uh, I'm doing pretty good, you know. Sweet. So you've been playing a couple years. You're in Florida, right? Yeah. Very cool. And um, you said, yeah, you're playing, you play an orchestra, uh, school orchestra, right? Yep. Okay. And what kind of things are you looking to improve on uh, that you feel like you're not doing as well right now? I feel like I need to play in tune more because uh, my friend Myra, she's been playing for like nine years. She's like crazy good. She always comments on all of us. We either play too sharp or too flat, and then it just sounds really bad. And I also need to improve like how fast my fingers move because I feel like they don't move fast enough for some things. Okay, good stuff. I feel like you have a good vision of what you need to improve on, so I can definitely help you out. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. Uh, Anna, how you doing? Good. Good. You're from Arizona. You were with us last week. I uh, had some of the tips um, turn out for you. You've been practicing some of them since? Yes, I have been. Great. So, um, yeah, anything, any questions uh, kind of in follow-up from last week, or are you just looking to learn some new stuff today? Just looking to learn something new. Sounds good. All right. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll start with Bradley. i am just kind of hear you play a little bit. Um, sounds like you really have a good idea of kind of what you're looking to improve on. So if you could play me a scale, I'd really appreciate that. And then I'm going to kind of talk about some of the things you might be able to improve on. Go ahead, Bradley. Uh, what scale? G major, C major? Sure. sure. And Maddie and Anna, if you guys want to warm up um, with a scale, I'll, I'll uh, call on you in a second. I'll watch you guys play in a second. <laughs> Nice. If you could put your camera down a little bit, um, I didn't get a chance to see your whole bow grip, uh, mostly just your left hand there. I actually really liked what I saw in the left hand. Um, if you could maybe do another scale, can you do it slower and use more bow? And um, I'm going to take a look at the other things. Go ahead. Excellent. Very, uh, very, very good left hand, um, especially for not having private lessons. Your left hand's great. Very high, very structured as far as angles back. Good intonation, for the most part there. I have the feeling you're kind of the type of player that tries to play really fast, though. Am I, am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we want to slow things down. Use lots of bow um, extension. I do see some restriction in your bow hand. Um, I see your thumb is pressing up against the bow quite a bit. Um, I call that banana thumb, whenever your thumb is like this, instead of being like this, curved, relaxed. So actually, that's going to help you play faster if you're uh, more relaxed and using more of the index finger to guide the bow. Have you ever ever had any instruction or tips on that, using the index, or no? I don't think I have. Okay, I think that would really, really help you. Okay, so basically, I'll, I'm kind of, uh, I'll explain this to all you guys. So when you're playing the violin, you have to be using the front finger to guide the bow. A lot of you guys, you use too much of your overall hand grab to guide the bow, the stuff you don't really learn in orchestra. Um, but basically, you know, to be able to move the bow efficiently, cross strings cleanly, you know, overall get a clean sound, you have to be using small muscles, which basically is using here and not using here and not using here. Okay, so keeping the hand really relaxed. As you can see, if I actually, if you guys want to try this with me, go ahead and put your bow and violins down. Go ahead and just. Um, Take your hand and just kind of flop it in front of you as relaxed as you can get it. 
okay? So my hand's really loose, relaxed, just like it should be for vibrato. And then watch how when I put my bow into my hands, there's not much change there. See that? A lot of you guys are changing what you're doing when you hold the bow. So, so go ahead and take the bow and try to put it in your hands and try not to move much of anything from that position, okay? Notice how my pinky is curved. A lot of you guys have a stiff pinky. Uh, Bradley, you actually had a very stiff pinky. Oh. <laughs> you were really pushing up against the bow with that pinky. Um, and thumb, you were like this and like that. So ba that's very common for these two fingers to guide the bow, but they should not. It should be this finger, okay? So we wanna have it very relaxed, loose, and then we're guiding here, okay? So here's um, a couple things that we can do to sort of test this and work on this. So if you guys wanna take your violins, I want you to um, try to do what we just talked about with a relaxed bowl. But this is going to really expose how we're doing with the, the hand tension that we're talking about right now. So I want you to set your bow at the tip. And I want you guys to rock the bow from G string elbow to E string elbow. And I want you to not make a sound. Be as quiet as you possibly can. Okay? If you make any of this sound, there's tension. Go ahead and try it. And uh, Maddie, go a little farther up above the instrument and then drop your arm all the way to your side. Um, try to have this kind of more flowing, like a chicken with their head cut off. <laughs> so more arm movement. So Bradley, um, you're getting a little bit more of a slide, right? That means that you're not using the index to pressure down into the bow to keep it still. And that's ultimately what you should be doing when you're changing direction. So that might be a bad habit. So I want you to take your index and sort of pinch the bow more so that you stay in the same spot for this drill. So. Yeah, use more. Yeah, we haven't. I don't think we've used a lot of that index. So this is really good for you. Um, okay, so explanation to all you guys. So dynamics, to play louder, to play softer, um, this really helps, you know, if you guys are in orchestra and you want to become like first chair, to play loud, to play clear, you have to use your index finger to pressure down into the stick to give it more volume, okay? So that, that makes a difference between a really soft mid player and a more aggressive and louder solo player, okay? So we want to play loud, we want to press into the stick, and for you, Bradley, uh, quite a bit more. I think you haven't even done any of that. You've done a lot of arm guidance and a lot of pinky and thumb guidance so we want to press down so one thing that you could do Bradley this is another drill is just set your bow in the strings and just use your index to press down into the stick you guys can all try this if you like um, don't rock the bow hair just take the stick and rock it down to the hair this you guys see go ahead and try this So we're, we're taking, yeah, we're pressing down and not rocking the bow hair, just the stick coming down to the hair. So Anna, we don't want to rock the hair. The rocking the hair is more this. We want to just bring the stick down. Yeah, Bradley, you're doing that pretty well. Keep the bow hold the same though and try not to press with the thumb and the pinky. Anna, that's better. Good, you see Maddie? Yep, so Maddie, you're getting a little bit more of that rock when you're doing it. Try to just bring the stick down. Yep. Good. Better. We're going to make you into an aggressive, loud solo player, Maddie. We're going to get you first chair in your orchestra. All right. <laughs> I can tell you play a little bit more on the timid side. All right. Cool. So yeah, that's gonna be really helpful. Um, so Bradley, if you wanna try the rocking bow drill again, can you keep that in mind, that pressure? So now we're trying to keep the bow in the same spot, and that's what we should be doing when we're changing directions as well. Better, good. Anna, let me see you do it. Bring your elbow all the way down to your side. Nice. Good. Maddie, I can't hear how much of the noise you're getting, but um, let me see. Yeah, let's see how you're doing with the noise. That's bad. 
Nice. So some of that tension, that, that sound that you're hearing is some of the tension we're talking about. So you might be pressing with the thumb or the pinky. So try to le lessen that and try to just use the index finger. There you go. All right, any questions on that so far, everybody? So basically all that stuff is gonna give you a better sound. It's gonna give you um, the ability to play cleaner, to play more advanced concertos, you know, all the fun stuff that comes up with violin playing. So yeah, highly recommend working on all that. Um, cool, let me see, uh, let me watch Maddie play a little bit. Um, if you guys, Bradley and Anna, if you guys wanna warm up with a piece to play for me, um, I'm gonna watch Maddie play a little bit. Pretty good. Yeah, nice, stable playing. Um, didn't get the best angle of the other side as far as the height of the, of the um, each string knuckles. Could you, maybe, your sister's doing this, right? Yeah. Um, could could she, could you kind of get it to where I'm seeing the other side of her a little bit? And can you play something, yeah, over there. And then could you play something that crosses some strings and stuff? Something that's on because you were just playing kind of on the E string, which is which is great. But could you play something on more A D E as well? Um, Maybe a Suzuki piece or something, or even a, even just a scale is fine, I guess. Okay. Like starting on the lower strings and work your way up. Pretty good, yeah, really nice stable playing. So remind me again, so you're playing in orchestra at school or, or taking lessons, what, what are you up to with violin? I take private lessons and I do orchestra at school. Okay, that can make sense, okay. Cool, what are some of your goals with uh, playing? Are you trying to like get a better chair or are you trying to just play for fun or your mom makes you play or, or what's the status? I mean, I'm first chair in the orchestra already. Nice. Because the majority, well, almost everybody in the orchestra is in book one. Um, yep. I did start halfway through third grade. Okay. Um, but, I mean, I don't really know what would, I feel like I'm trying to get their position, master, especially on the Eastern. Okay. Do you have a lot, do you have any, like, um, local groups you're trying to get into, like a youth symphony or anything, or? Um, I don't know what you would call it, but we don't. I I don't I I haven't been in it. My friend has um it's called Festival Strings. Mm -hmm. Um I it's just a I guess you play with the Hershey Symphony. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know more detail about it, but Okay. Cool. Um so what does your teacher have you working on as far as like a piece, like a solo piece, anything? Not really much until looking. I just got to book three. Okay, so, so you're just you're just working yeah. with book three? Yeah. Okay. I highly recommend um, getting into something else too, you know, working on like a, a Suzuki book or um, something that's gonna challenge you with articulation as well. Cause yeah, like that, that Essential Elements book three is, is good for learning shifting, but it uh, doesn't have as much of the, uh, you know, rhythms, articulation, stuff like that. I um, did do Suzuki one, but I'm now we're doing Disney. But okay. I don't know, we just like pick pieces one, like every week I go. Um, right okay. now I'm working on, I don't know what I'm 
uh, Pilot's Life. Okay. Um, he has a, we haven't really went over that, but the one that I, uh, we've been working on, we worked on a Never Smile at a Crocodile last time, and that one's pretty okay. good. That's probably the one that I really want to get good at, because it has the coda and all that stuff. Okay. So kind of, the yeah, we kind play of, for me. Uh, play for me that, or or maybe Suzuki one something else other than just the scales. Because yeah, you're I want to see kind of what how you're doing with other things too. Okay, how about this? I'll have you warm up with that. Um, I'm gonna listen okay. to Anna play a little bit, okay? Okay. I'll meet you. All right, Anna, go ahead. Let me see how you're doing. I've been working on the two two octaves C, D, and G scales. Okay, good. Yeah, any of those, let's hear it. I'll play the D one. Okay. <clears throat> Good job. Looks like you've gotten a lot better with the um, some of the tips. You know, you're using less arm, using more wrist. It's good. Really nice job. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I got a lot of potential, like I mentioned last week. Um, so yeah, th that's a uh, you know pretty easy for you. You know those those scales. I mean, have you um, have you gone into fifth much? Like F major fifth? Can you play that scale yet? I haven't tried it yet. Okay, I would recommend that. Um, so that's basically F major. <laughs> Fifth position, like that. You want to try that, or you might have to kind of work on that before trying it. Yeah. I'm okay. Working. I would recommend um, F major uh, two octave. Um, I would recommend also G major three octave. I think you want to write those down. Yeah. Um, I think those. I think I would really push you more to kind of learn more of the higher positions. That's a good start. So I would say, yeah. Um, let me give you like four or five scales to to work on this week. Okay. Um, so F major two two octave. Um, recommend E flat major two octave if you haven't done that one before. I recommend G major three octave. A major three octave. And I would also do, let's see, one more. I think you could probably handle B flat major three octave. I really do. See how you do with it. So I would say those five scales. Um, and then I would recommend um, for you to get into a nice etude book. Have you done any etudes before or not really? I have. I went through one beginner etude book. Okay. I think you should be doing um, something really more challenging. So I, I think uh, Maza's. Is a good etude book. It it delves into third and fifth positions with our good articulation. So if I can give you an assignment for this week, I would recommend that you do the first um, the first and the second mazas. Um, you can actually find it in the public domain. Um, if you type in this into um, into Google, it's basically um, I M S L P um, mazas violin etude. If you type that into, into Google, um, it should pop up, and um, it's basically a free download. So I recommend working on on the first few, even the first three for the first yeah the next couple weeks. I would say, um, and then um, yeah maybe start with that and see how it goes. I think um, there's a lot of good stuff in those books. I was wondering. In order to be in a like a school orchestra or something, do you have to go to the school? Because I'm homeschooled, so I don't oh. really know what they do in the public schools or universities. Oh. Yeah, um, yeah, typically you, 
you can get into like a school orchestra if you if you talk to them if you let them know the situation like if there isn't a homeschool association but um like in our area there's a homeschool orchestra actually so i don't know if that's the case with you maybe not um but if there's not then i would just go to one of them and and talk to one of the orchestra directors and just try to see if they could let you in um based on you know you're trying to you know advance and and, and you would add a lot of value to the orchestra so i think they might consider it um but yeah i don't know if you've checked into like an, another option of the whole like um local or orchestras like we talked about last week but that's also why they have those organizations because of people like yourself that want to advance and play in an orchestra but um their school orchestra isn't advanced enough or um you don't have the program so i, I don't know if you've checked into that or not we looked at a um i think it's a community college that we have real close to us we looked at their website, but we couldn't find anything for strings, really. Okay. Yeah, I would just talk to, like, the string um, orchestra teachers of, like, the more advanced programs and just tell them what you're trying to do. And I think that they would just help you out. They would just give you some good advice and what, what they would do based on your situation. Okay. Start networking, talking to people. Um, another option would be, you know, if you're looking to play in college, you know, try to talk to, um, you know, one of the college directors and see if you could start getting into some stuff at the college, too. Yeah. So, yeah, the second that you get the, all that music that's challenging, then you're just going to start, you know, getting more pushed to, to learn more and more stuff. I, I think that'd be really good for you to, to join an orchestra for sure. So, cool. All right, well, uh, any other questions? I'm going to move on to Bradley and Maddie here in a second. No. All right, good playing. Really good improvement. I'm, I'm impressed. I thought, I thought you'd really done well from last week. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Bradley. I think you're having lots of fun over there. <laughs> I'm just playing some random things. I've seen you, like, walk around a few times and, like, you know, play a little bit, come back. <laughs> Yeah. You're getting that you're getting that bug, that performance bug, huh? <laughs> a little bit. I mean not really. Uh hey, it's good. It's it's a good bug. All right. Let's see it. Let's see your play. Okay. Um so I played this in a, as a duo with my uh friend Myra. She's been playing for nine years, so she's like crazy insane. Uh she played first violin, I played second violin, so I'm probably just gonna play the second violin part. Okay. I'm kind of nervous right now, so I'm probably going to play the shifting part out of tune. <laughs> but That's all right. Okay. I'll give you some good tips. So yeah, I can just tell that uh, your um, friend or whatever that's a good violinist. She she's like super. She likes to play super fast, right? Yeah. And she's kind of got. She's kind of giving you that bug, hasn't she? A little bit. A little bit. All right. Well, um, let me tell you this: to play really good at the violin, even though she's implying it's fast, 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 it's not necessarily all about fast. It's all about um, accuracy, and you know, good intonation, good habits, because. You can actually surpass her if you build solid fundamentals and technique. And she might be playing fast, 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 but you might just go over the top because you have that solid core. So don't be thinking um, that you have to do everything so fast. Um, if you take that half the speed, it would have been more accurate, right? So that's important to start off slower. Obviously, you're nervous too. I get it. Uh, one tip, uh, your bow is quite tight. Um, try to loosen your bow. 
Um, that's kind of making your bow bounce a bit. Um, the same things I was talking about, about the thumb and the pinky are, are still applying, that you're not really um, getting as good of a sound because you're pressing here and not using here. So you're gonna get better articulation um, with the staccato in this piece, especially with the, with the index. So, so more here, not so much here, okay? And then that speed, I just took it, I would do it more at that speed. Uh, go ahead and try it again. Okay. Slow, slow, slow. <laughs> Good. All right. Another thing, another tip. Um, when you're shifting, and this goes for all you guys that are watching, um, make sure that your thumb and your index finger are shifting together. Okay, that's going to help your consistency with shifting. So when you're shifting there, you're kind of just coming up with a one and not thinking about the thumb. So when you're doing, when you're shifting, always the thumb is what's helping us be in tune. Index. Be thinking more about that. It would help a lot to do maybe some etudes, you know, doing shifting back and forth, you know, like the um, third position book uh, Whistler. I highly recommend. So that has you do exercises like. So just, I would, yeah, do some more exercises, some scales, and slow down. <laughs> Good job. All right, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes, yeah, so I just got to shift with my thumb and yeah. slow down and just practice scales to stay um, more in tune. Yeah, I think, the, I think the drills would really benefit you a lot. Like, you actually have very, very good technique in your left hand. You're set up perfectly in the left hand. Your knuckles are up high. You're doing great here. Yeah, you're just guiding. I think um, because of your friend, she's kind of giving you that bug and you're using everything you possibly can to play fast. And that's causing you some problems. So I think um, you got to slow down, use more of the small muscles. That actually makes you play faster when you use small muscles. You know, so... That's all right here, not here. Make sense? Yep. Awesome. Good job. Thank you for playing. Really good job. We'll come back to you. All right. Let's go to Maddie. Maddie's been practicing, warming up. How are you? Good. All right. So, yeah, I want to see how you're doing with, uh, with the song. Very good. Yeah, good fundamentals there uh, for the most part. That, that would tell you take lessons. Um, if I was, yeah, I would definitely try to get your bow hold more over the top. Mm -hmm. You're you're very much on the tips of the fingers when, when you're playing. Um, that's actually caught, you notice sometimes you get that bow bounce a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's because you're bringing the bow to the next string with tension. And a lot of it's with those big muscles. You're kind of tensing up to cross strings. So you have to do that more here with with being relaxed. The violin's holding the bow for you, so it's just elbow bringing down. It's going to avoid all that bow bounce. 
But yeah, try it. let's take a look at your bow hold. Um, so we want to have things more over the top. Let's see how far my index finger is over the top. Yeah, even more. You're very you're kind of off the side a lot, like here instead of being here. And what that does is that causes that tension here that makes it bow tense. A little better. Yeah, there you go. I like that adjustment. Bring that finger over. Good. Yeah, so um, I think working on the drills is going to be really good for you. Uh, maybe just talk to your teacher about that. Like, how can I, um, you know, work on loosening up my hand, you know, work on some drills and stuff like that to, to avoid that bow bounce that, that you're kind of getting a little bit. Um, all that stuff, the index, the rocking bow drill is good. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, a few spots here and there with intonation, you know. Um, do you use a tuner at all, like, to match your notes up? Have you ever done that or no? I have before, but I don't really do it anymore. I don't, don't do it anymore? Do it. Okay, that would benefit you. Um, like, I actually really like the um, the INS Tuner Light. I'll write that in the chat here. Um, it's really great because it, it lights up different colors based on um, if you're in tune or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, you know, you just you put it right on your music stand. And um, the way that I recommend using it is if you're in the green, you're good. That's perfect. If you're in the yellow, that's not, it's a little off, but not bad. So yellow is okay. And then if it's orange or red, is when you have to make an adjustment. So here's the the tuner. You guys will love my cracked phone. So you can see the yellow. Mm -hmm. That's that's fine, and then um, see green. So green is perfect, and then it could be red. Red is off, so then you want to make an adjustment. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And one more drop of my phone, and it's it's pretty much in the in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> I need a phone like one of those uh, protectors, right? So good. So I would I would use um yeah tuning apps. I would work on drills, um, more index finger. But uh, but yeah, overall really good. I would also maybe get it to where you're you have some sort of goal in mind. I know how it can kind of be with uh, playing an orchestra and being first chair. I was first chair from fifth grade through twelfth grade, mm -hmm. and I know that I wasn't ever pushed or like um you know didn't feel much incentive to practice with orchestra. I always felt more with like youth symphony or with like uh, some sort of ensemble. So, so maybe talk to your parents and see if they can get you into some sort of like group that's that's gonna be of you know more advanced players than you. Yeah. Because that's gonna make you a better player. You know. Mm -hmm. See what's available. Any questions? No. All right. Hope you enjoyed the class. Hope that helps. Hope that helped out. And uh, your sister's there too. Okay. Sister, how you doing? I feel like she might have a couple questions. All right. I'm sure. getting very tired. Yeah, all of them. Sure. Now it's, now, so, it's your, now it's your turn to hold it. Yeah. So uh, I guess I feel like I she just wants to. She wants to start, but she doesn't know where. Like she feel. I don't know. What do you? What do you? I was. Okay. In book one, but then I went to the clarinet because I wanted to try a different instrument. But now I want to go back to the violin. <laughs> so she, okay. I don't know, like, I feel like she's trying to figure out, should she start with, like, private lessons or just start or with a group lesson? Or yeah. the group lessons, too. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's really a lot of ways to start. Um, yeah. You know, having a private teacher is ultimate you know, because then they can guide you along and make sure you're not doing anything to make, you know, any mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, playing orchestra at school is good. You know, that kind of keeps you playing every day. Um, you know, some students are disciplined enough to learn online, not as much with the younger ones, but uh, you could, you know, if you can't, if your parents can't afford lessons or whatever, you don't have an orchestra. Um, but yeah, just kind of get involved with anything you can with violin. You could come to these groups every week. That would help um, motivate you. And obviously, the fact that your sister plays, you could play along with her. You know, learn with her. Yeah, you know, whenever she, whenever she played, I kind of guided her sometimes because yeah. she didn't like to practice. She's still not doesn't like to practice. Also, a little bossy when she does. Oh, yeah. you're one of you're one of those students that doesn't like to practice, huh? <laughs> yep, uh, that's what she. Well, and she doesn't even practice clarinet, and I try to persuade well, her, but I don't. Oh, okay. I don't like to play. I don't like to play the clarinet. But I do like the violin. I just wanted to try something new. That's all. That you want to do? Okay. Do you have a violin to even play on if you wanted to? 
Um, well, my grandma's picking us up from school tomorrow, so we might, um, should we, we're trying to get her one just so she can, you know, get some Well, we tips. want to rent. We're going to rent. Well, yeah, we're going to rent. I, I just got to a full size, um, yeah. And I, we bought mine, but she's just, I think, whenever I do something, so like when I got my, bio, my full size, she's like, I want to play. And then she kind of dozed off, and then whenever I went to my concert last week, she's like, I want to play. So I feel like. Whenever she gets inspired by me, she just really wants to play. So I'm not sure what to go with. But. Now, well, my parents are saying I have to finish off the year with the clarinet. <laughs> parents are like, you can't just start something and stop it. You got to keep going. You got to yeah. finish what you started, right? That's good. Yeah. That's good advice. Yeah. And there is a camp that I did last year for fourth and fifth graders. Um, but based, it's, I, I think it might be a little too advanced for her, especially. Yeah. Um. But if, I think I might do it this year, and it depends where she is, of course. Um, the school teacher wants to see her play just to get an idea of where she's at. Yeah. So I, I, that's why I'm thinking I want I wanted to get a, a, an instrument by the time the last orchestra practice is over. Because just so, so she, um, he has an idea where she's at. So, you sound like her mom. Like you're like, you know, yeah. this and that. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I mean, I, I'm trying to, I, she wants to play, and I'm trying to get my parents to agree with. Sure. No, that's good. I, I say that in a good way. Like you're a very yeah. supportive sister, you know, like you're, you're trying, you're, you want what's best for her. That's great. So basically I want to get a violin tomorrow so I can practice because orchestra for Maddie is what day? Hmm. Thursday. Okay. So I can go in with her and I can put play but I doubt yeah. that because I haven't learned every single note that I yeah. have to get them so I feel like I need a couple more weeks to practice before I actually go in so well you know violin takes lots of practice so you know yeah I you used to learn I, it it takes more so um I do theory because my um private teacher assigns me to do that and I thought maybe for the first week or two that she should just, I should try to like write something out so she could try it. Just so, cause it, in the beginning, it kind of asked you to do like where the notes are. Like try to find a page that does this. Oh, like, <clears throat> kind of like this, where it has you fill in where the notes are. Yeah. Um, and I thought that might be good just to get her, you know, used to where they are. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, ultimately getting a violin in her hand and, you know, yeah. working on the, the basics is good, too. Um, so, yeah, you know, that'd be cool if you guys could play together someday. I just got told the other day that whenever I was getting my violin, she got sized. Because <laughs> oh, yeah. at that point, she's like, I want to play. So mm -hmm. I was almost yeah. a three course. Yes. I used her. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, hopefully by next week, there'll be some sort of update with that. And maybe she'll be on with us playing and getting tips as well. Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll see. I guess my parents must have a little talk with us, so. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, I saw they emailed me, so we'll we'll talk via email as well um, about uh, violins or whatever else you had questions about. And I hope you guys enjoyed the class. I'm gonna give you guys the code for the um, the contest because yeah, I'm giving away a bow. Yep. And you guys all get 100 entries for being here and. Um, Participating, so yeah, every every uh, every Tuesday at uh, six o'clock, uh, you guys should bring your friends on and anybody else that wants to learn violin. I did put Samantha in the Facebook group also, so. Okay, sweet. Yeah. I'm not sure if she saw that because she's never on Facebook and I'm like on it all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to communicate. I figured a kids group, you know, for all of us to you know encourage each other and um, you know give you guys tips throughout the week and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let me give you guys the code. So this is the code for the people that are watching the replay. So this is not for you okay. guys that are here right now. Um, but this is going to be the code for the replay people. It's going to be kids and then Muller. So it's kids as in kids and then Muller is M-U-L-L-E-R. M-U-L-L-E-R. Kids Muller. That's going to be the code. And then for you guys, I'm going to paste the code for the 100 entries for being here live. Congratulations. Congratulations. Everybody. Good job, Bradley. Good job. I'm going to put that here. Uh, do not say this quote out loud, people that are here, please, unless you want everybody to get 100 points. So that's the code for the live attendees. So, yeah, I appreciate you guys being here, um, coming to the class. 
I'll be doing these every Tuesday at six o'clock. So again, yeah, tell anybody out there that's interested, that's under 18, that plays an orchestra, that's wanting to get some tips and learn and improve. Um, we have a good Facebook group and um, you guys can plan on these every week. Any questions? All right, we'll practice hard and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for coming. Bye, people.